Hey everybody, what's up? And welcome back to Some Real Talk. I'm your host, Maya Vanette. We've got a great interview for you guys today, but it's not with somebody you've seen on TikTok, and it's not with somebody you've seen on American Idol. Chances are you've probably seen this guy on ESPN. Today, we're getting real with Jared Butler from the Baylor Bears, AKA the champions of the March Madness Tournament for men's basketball. We're getting real with Jared about everything from his influences to his origin story and what's next post Baylor. Jared's got game and I've got the interview. Without further ado, Jared Butler. He's the guy you'd want on your team on the court, but today we're about to get to know who he is off the court. Please welcome to some Real Talk, a member of the Baylor Bears, NCAA Men's Basketball Champions, and March Madness's most outstanding player in the Final Four, Jared Butler. Hi. Hey, how you doing? You doing all right? I'm great. And yourself? Doing great. I'm doing phenomenal, like always. Always. Just came off of a, a championship win. Just came off of a graduation. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's been a, a wild, like, last few months. Um a lot of, you know, life accomplishments, a lot of, you know, just milestones in life that you reach for me, especially, but, um, but yeah, so it's, it's cool. Like, you know, next chapter in life's coming, um, closing one chapter. So that's about it. He talked about closing one chapter, but I actually want to start with how this particular chapter began. So you're a pretty confident guy. You went on social media last year and posted a video basically saying, I have unfinished business. We're winning a championship this year. So my question to you is, walk me through how that happened. Did you call up, you know, Macy Oteague, Davion Mitchell, say, hey, are you coming back? Are we doing this? Are we winning the championship? Or did you say, okay, I don't know who's coming back, but regardless of who comes back, I'm winning a championship next year. Testing the NBA, um, you know, what they call it, it's like testing the waters. It's like a a really, not big thing, but like a kind of scary, you know, uncertain thing. So just going through the process, I felt like it was just in my best interest to come back to school. And, um, and fortunately, the other guys like Davion, Mark, and, and Mesa, they kind of already made a decision to come back. So, um, you know, that was just another reason, like, wow, I get to come back and play ba basically with the same team. And um, when I decided to come back, I mean, I, I just felt like we had the, a great team. We had a team that's um, capable of winning the national championship. And, you know, it was only right. Like, we, we were, like, number one in the country last year for a little bit. We didn't win a Big 12 championship. We didn't win that. We couldn't play in the in the NCAA tournament. Um, so that was just like, you know, a culmination of things that we needed to do. And I felt like we, we could have done so. Yeah, I guess it's a little confident. But I felt like we were capable of it, too, at the same time. So basically, you made the decision on your own. But when Maceo and Mark and Davion decided to come back, it was like, OK, we're, we're doing this for real. Yeah, we're getting the, we're getting the band back together. That's, that's basically what it was. Okay, so the morning after the championship, you were on CBS this morning, <laughs> and you said your life can change in a year if you put your mind to it. So mind you, a year ago, we had kind of just started a global pandemic. Nobody knew it was happening. You didn't know if you were going back to school or going into the MBA. So I pose the question to you, how has your life changed in the past year? It changed a lot. Um, I don't think I've changed like as a... I've, I've definitely grown as a person and um, this year, this past year at Baylor has really, you know, catapulted me spiritually, physically, and just, you know, a, as a whole, for sure, a hundred percent. I think, I guess the only thing that's changed is now I'm a national champion. Now I'm a big 12 champion. Like it's, it's just stuff like that. That's like, you know, add, adding things to my resume, but um, I, I, I just, I'm just so thankful for, you know, just the, the year that Baylor's given me and the people I, I was able to be around, the relationships I was able to build. That was, like, really, really cool. And, um, you know, I just appreciated it a lot. Um, but, yeah, and I graduated from college, which is, like, a really cool thing, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. As if you don't need yet another thing to be congratulated. Right, right, right. <laughs> okay, so jumping from Baylor to Riverside High School. You were number 12 at Baylor, but back in high school, you were number 11. And when mm -hmm. you did a brief stint at Alabama, you were also number 11. But, you know, you get to Baylor and Mark Vidal is number 11. You ended up number 12. I have <laughs> to ask, is there a special significance to the number 11 for you? Yeah, it, I mean, like basketball players, they they tend to have like some big time reason why they are a certain number. But like for me, my like one of the players I liked uh, watching the highlights and stuff like that was Jamal Crawford, and he was number 11 
um, in, like majority of his years in the NBA. So like, that's why I kind of chose 11. Um, and then, yeah, it was just so unfortunate. I got to Baylor and they didn't have 11. I was like, man, like, but whatever. But like, I was just, you know, just, just so excited to be there. Like 12 was like the next, the next option. And, um, you know, it, it just became a number. So like, that was, it's just a number that's at the end of the day. It's not about the number that's on the jersey. It's about who's wearing it. Yeah, for sure. For a thousand percent. So speaking of Riverside, when you went home last month to Laplace, Louisiana, you were honored at this huge ceremony at Riverside High School. They mm. retired your jersey. Basically, a lot of people back home think very highly of you. A lot of people in Waco think very highly of you. And more and more people across the nation are starting to think very highly of you as well. But I pose this question to you. If you take away the stats, the titles, the championship, who is Jared Butler? Who is Jared Butler? Wow, that's that's a pretty deep question. Um, you know, I'm I'm a pretty low maintenance, um, genuine guy. I love hanging. I love going to eat with people. I love hanging out with my friends and um, you know just experiencing life together. Uh, I'm a hard worker. Um, pretty dedicated guy like I'm all of it all or nothing guy like if I'm going to eat ice cream we're going to eat the whole pint like if I you know I'm just a train without without breaks sometimes for a lot of things which is good and bad but um but yeah um I love I love people impacting people that's kind of just um what I've been trying to do and um yeah and then I'm a Christ follower Christian as they call it um yeah, so that's probably the biggest thing, I, I think, as far as my identity, but but yeah. If that's who you are, are you ever worried that, like, from here on out, people aren't going to get to see Jared Butler, they're going to get to see Jared Butler of the Baylor Bears, or Jared Butler, the basketball star? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 not a problem, because, I, I mean, at the end of the day, I, I did go to Baylor, I did all these things, and, um, you know, to the right, like, that's all they see. And, um, but yeah, like, I, I'm not worried about it because I think at the end of the day, if you really get to know me, um, if you ask me questions like these, like, like this, like you're gonna, you know, get to know who I am behind all the, you know, accolades and stuff like that. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's, you know, you kind of can't, you can't force um, a narrative around what people think about you. They're just gonna think about you regardless. So, um, you know, it's, it's a struggle for sure. But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with who I am for sure. And that's what we're doing. We're getting to know you right here. So let's keep getting to know you. I know you've gotten a lot of love from Baylor Nation. You're basically a hometown hero over there. But when you were on Barstool Sports a while back, you spoke about the hate that you actually get from some people whose brackets you busted or whose odds you messed up. If you go to the league, that's going to come with a lot more hate because it's a lot more of a bigger platform. How do you think you're going to deal with the negativity that comes with being a professional athlete? Uh, I mean, I, I've dealt with negativity at Baylor, like um, just mm-hmm. I, I think kind of my whole life. Um, you know, it's it's all about just who you, you know, how you value your worth, how you value your happiness and like what you do to protect your happiness. And like, you know, opinions are just, you know, like opinions are like buttholes. Everybody has one. Uh, like it's, it, it's, it's something that you just kind of have to deal with just being an athlete and being in, you know, society and stuff like that. But um, I'm, I'm not too worried about the negativity, you know, I just try to keep it out of my, my life. And, um, you know, people are going to have opinions, so I'm okay with it. Like, I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. My guy said, I'm cool and laid back. Let me prove it to you. All right. Literally, that's exactly what it is. Okay. So around this time, I always like to play a game. So mm-hmm. we play a game. Let's do it. All right. So I'm going to ask you a series of questions. The game is called Who's Who? And the goal is not to think too much on it, not to give an explanation, but to just think out loud. The first thing that comes to your mind when I ask you a question. You ready? Yeah. All right. Your whole family is at the game. Who's screaming the loudest? Uh, My sister. (laughs) You find out you got tickets to go see the greatest performer alive. Who did you get tickets to see? Who it's either Drake or Michael Jackson. I don't know. I don't know. Who's the player you most admired as a kid? Uh, Chris Paul, for sure. Who in your life do you call the most on for advice? Uh, my parents. Yeah, they, they're always in my life. Yeah. You find out you get an hour to talk to one NBA player about their career. Who are you talking to? 
Um, talking to Michael Jordan, like, of course, like, what? You're having a bad day and you need a laugh. Who on the Baylor squad are you calling? <laughs> I'm calling, <laughs> I'm calling Matthew Meyer. Yeah, that's who I'm calling, my guy. You just saw your favorite movie star walking down the street. Who did you just see? Margot Robbie, she's phenomenal. <laughs> and who has single-handedly had the biggest impact on your life thus far? Oh, that's so hard to, to, to you know, estimate or whatever. Um, okay, uh, key I mean, three. Uh, my parents, so that's two people. And then um, I got to say my friends, like my roommates. I don't know how many people that is, but I guess I'll let you slide because it's the last Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, so from that I gather, likes Drake, loves basketball, loves his family even more. Yeah, something like that, yeah. All right, so getting back to basketball. We talked about uh -huh. Baylor. We talked a little bit about Riverside. I'm trying to go way back. So oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> is there a moment in your early life that you can pinpoint to where you first fell in love with the game of basketball? Uh, yeah, um, growing up, I have an older brother, right? And um, we would always play, we, I live in a cul-de-sac and we used to always play outside um, in the cul-de-sac playing basketball with his friends. And they're like five to six years older than me. And um, I remember a time playing and they kind of would let me play. Um, they would let me play, but like, they would like just block every shot. They would just like not give me any room or nothing. And I came inside crying to my dad. My dad's sitting on the couch watching TV. And I came in crying. And then um, my dad's like, well, like either you're gonna sit and cry in here with me and watch TV, or you're gonna go back outside. And um, I remember being like, no, I'm gonna go back outside. And um, yeah, like, I think that's when I kind of knew like, yeah, like I love it no matter what, what's going on, so yeah. Does your brother ever feel bad for that story? No, cause he's like, yeah, like I, I deserve some credit of how to, who the player you are today you know what I mean yeah I think everyone in the whole family does your sister's screaming loudest at the game you call on right. the parents for advice your right. brother is the one who gave you your adversity story <laughs> <laughs> no literally literally that's you got it down right there all right so keeping around the family you were dealt a pretty good hand in life you know you grew up in a stable household you had your brother you had your sister you had both your parents what do you think is the greatest adversity you've had to overcome in your life that's a tough question, um, but um, I think for me, it was really just, um, I had to change schools. Um, I went to Alabama for like a two month period and um, I had to transfer schools to, to Baylor. And it, I'm not saying it was hard. It was, it was just a hard period of my life because um, just like life, you know, sometimes throws, throws curveballs at you and you're just like, why, like what's going on? You don't understand it. And um, that was like, the thing for me and um that was like a pretty adverse thing that just um kind of like crumbled my life and you know I felt the weight of the world on my shoulders and um you know I had to overcome that and um so yeah that was like my biggest test or trial I would say so you're a very nice person coach Drew whenever he's in an interview and he's asked about Jared Butler he always praises you on your game but he praises you on your character so is there a role model in your life or in the game who you've shaped a lot of your personality and character around? Uh, not really. Um, like I said, like I'm, I'm a Christian. So like, you know, my, my example is, is Jesus. But um, yeah, I mean, there's been some people in my life that I'm like, wow, I like that about you. I like that humble spirit about you. I like the, the way you um, grab the attention or the way you impact people. Like my high school coach, for example, was, you know, a big light for me and um, just how to be a competitor, how to win and stuff like that. Um, coach Drew's even a, a role model for me. And um, so, yeah, there's a lot of people, man. But I think the biggest person of all is, is definitely Jesus. But um, but yeah. So this past year has been a roller coaster for the nation, but it's been pretty great for you. I mean, <laughs> not even going to lie. We talked about this last year, but I want to look forward in the future. So where do you see yourself? And this could be in your career and your journey, just in life in general. But where do you see yourself five years from now? Five years. Uh, yeah, I see myself in the NBA. Um, I don't know where, wherever. I don't know. But, you know, five years in, um, hopefully I got like a, uh, uh, 
a partner or somebody, um, a significant <laughs> other. Hopefully I'm like about to get married, something like that. And um, yeah, and I'm just enjoying life trying to advance my career as a basketball player. And um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Sounds kind of simple, to be honest with me. Garrett, thank you so much for being here with us today. Final question. What message do you want to leave your supporters with? Um, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough worries um, for itself. Um, you know, just take care of the day. And, um, you know, I, I think you can stack up as many days where you go 1-0 and, and you'll be successful at the end of it. So, yeah, that's my advice. Jared Butler, y'all, a great guy on the court and off the court. Thank you so much for being with us here today. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. And that's a wrap for today's show. I'm your host, Maya Vanette. Thank you so much to Jared Butler for coming on this episode of Some Real Talk. And thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you thought about Jared down in the comment section below. Where do you think he's going to end up post-draft? If you enjoyed this video half as much as I enjoyed talking to Jared, you basically have to click that like button down below. And while you're at it, click subscribe so you never miss another exclusive interview from a star on the rise. This has been some real talk. Jared's on his way to the draft, and I'm on my way out. Until next time, keep it real.